that what does a united borderless Africa look like? Uh, a vision, a dream, a seemingly elusive goal that has been the heart of Pan-Africanism since its inception. Today, we journey through the thoughts, speeches, and ideology of Julius Malema, a firebrand South African politician and a leading advocate for this cause. Julius Malema, leader of the Economic Freedom Fighters, has been a beacon of Pan-Africanism, a philosophy that advocates for the unity, cooperation, and self-reliance of Africans worldwide. His commitment to the cause is unwavering, reflecting the belief that Africa's prosperity is linked to its unity and collective effort. Malema's advocacy is steeped in the legacy of Pan-African leaders like Kwame Nkrumah, Patrice Lumumba, and Thomas Sankara, whose tireless struggle for African liberation and unity continues to inspire him. He underscores the necessity of reclaiming Africa's resources and exploiting its potential for the benefit of its people, as opposed to external forces exploiting and plundering its wealth. A cornerstone of Malema's vision is African unity that transcends borders and ethnic divisions. He asserts the need to dismantle the artificial boundaries imposed by colonial powers, arguing they only serve to perpetuate division and impede social and economic progress. He envisions a united Africa achieved through solidarity and cooperation among African nations and advocates for stronger regional integration mechanisms, like the African Union, to foster collaboration in trade, security, and infrastructure development. Malema is also a vocal critic of the neo-colonial influence that continues to pervade African politics and economics. He contends that the legacy of colonialism has left Africa economically dependent on former colonial powers, stifling its ability to chart its own course towards development and prosperity. His advocacy for African unity is a direct challenge to the status quo, an effort to empower Africans to take control of their own destiny. But unity is not just about borders and politics. Malema has been a vocal critic of xenophobia and self-hatred within African societies. Xenophobia, the irrational fear or hatred of foreigners, has been a persistent problem in many African countries leading to violence, discrimination, and social exclusion. Malema condemns xenophobic attitudes and behaviors, arguing that they undermine the principles of Pan-Africanism and hinder efforts towards continental unity and solidarity. Similarly, he addresses the issue of self-hatred, which manifests in various forms of internalized oppression among Africans. This includes the glorification of Western ideals and the denigration of African culture, history, and identity. Malema believes that overcoming these internal barriers is key to achieving a united, borderless Africa. In summary, Julius Malema's vision for Africa is one of unity, solidarity, and self-reliance. He advocates for the dismantling of artificial borders, the eradication of xenophobia and self-hatred, and the establishment of stronger regional integration mechanisms. His advocacy, influenced by the legacy of pan-African leaders, is a call to action for Africans to reclaim their resources, harness their potential, and take control of their own destiny. This is the dream of a united, borderless Africa as seen through the eyes of Julius Malema. As we delve deeper into the vision of Julius Malema, we find a fundamental emphasis on economic liberation and resource ownership. Malema asserts that the exploitation of Africa's abundant natural resources by external forces is a considerable obstruction to the continent's development and self-sufficiency. He is a firm believer in the nationalization of crucial industries and strategic resources, arguing that this would empower African nations to harness their wealth for the welfare of their populace. In his speeches, Malema often criticizes multinational corporations and foreign governments for their exploitative practices, likening them to colonial-era resource extraction. 
He champions greater economic sovereignty and self-determination, underlining the necessity for African nations to control their own futures and pursue development strategies that prioritize the needs of their citizens over the interests of profit-driven entities. In this scene, we explore the concept of economic liberation as a key tenet of Pan-Africanism and how the control and ownership of resources can serve as a catalyst for self-sufficiency, sustainable development, and the eradication of poverty across the African continent. This is not just Malema's vision, but the shared dream of many Pan-African leaders and advocates. In the words of Julius Malema, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. From his perspective, education is far more than just a means of acquiring knowledge and skills. It's a tool for liberation, empowerment, and identity formation. In this scene, we delve into Malema's vision of a pan-African educational system that challenges Eurocentric narratives and instills a sense of pride in African heritage and achievements. Malema advocates for the decolonization of education, arguing that school curricula should not only reflect the diversity and richness of African history, but also highlight its significant contributions to world civilization. He envisions a system where African children learn about the great kingdoms of Mali and Songhai, the scientific achievements of the ancient Egyptians, the philosophical wisdom of the Yoruba and the Akan, and the literary masterpieces of Chinua Achebe and Wallace Soyink. Beyond the classroom, Malema sees the value of cultural exchange and collaboration among African nations. He emphasizes the importance of celebrating our diversity while also recognizing the common bonds that unite us across linguistic, ethnic, and national boundaries. This cultural renaissance, as he calls it, is essential for fostering a sense of belonging and solidarity among Africans, transcending the divisions imposed by colonialism and fostering a shared vision of a prosperous and inclusive Africa. The scene concludes with a powerful call to action, urging all Africans to take part in this cultural revival. It's a call for Africans to reclaim their history, to redefine their identity, and ultimately to shape their destiny. As Malema often says, we are not Africans because we were born in Africa, but because Africa was born in us. A power to the people, a phrase often echoed by Julius Malema, encapsulates his belief in the transformative potential of political empowerment and grassroots mobilization. As the leader of the economic freedom fighters, Malema has devoted his political career to championing the rights of the marginalized and disenfranchised, advocating for greater representation and participation of women, youth and rural communities within the political sphere. He asserts, True democracy is not a spectator sport. It requires active involvement from all citizens and transparency and accountability from those in power. In this scene, we delve deeper into Malema's vision of a politically awakened and mobilized Africa. He sees the political sphere as a crucial battleground in the fight for pan-African unity. Through grassroots organizing, he believes Africans can challenge entrenched power structures, demand social justice, and push for economic equality. From community meetings in rural villages to mass protests in bustling city centers, Malema emphasizes the power of collective action in effecting meaningful change. Malema's pan-African vision is not limited to the borders of South Africa. He encourages Africans across the continent to mobilize around common goals and interests, asserting that unity and solidarity are key to overcoming the socio-economic and political challenges facing Africa. This scene concludes with a call to action, urging Africans to take charge of their political destiny, to organize, mobilize, and fight for a just and prosperous Africa. As Malema often says, we are not just the future of Africa, we are its present. And it's time we start acting like it. Despite the formidable challenges facing Africa, Julius Malema remains optimistic about the continent's potential for transformation and renewal. The narrator begins setting the tone for this scene 
We explore Malema's belief in the power of overcoming internal divisions, fostering solidarity and embracing Pan-African ideals as the path to a brighter future for Africa. Achieving a borderless Africa will require sustained effort and cooperation on multiple fronts. We hear Malema's passionate voice echoing in the background. This includes tackling corruption, inequality, and governance failures that continue to undermine progress and hinder African unity. However, Malema remains undeterred, committed to the cause of Pan-Africanism. His convictions infectious, his words inspiring. The struggle for liberation and self-determination is an ongoing journey that requires resilience, determination, and collective action. This scene serves as a rallying cry to Africans, urging them to unite in solidarity, drawing strength from their shared history, culture, and aspirations for a better tomorrow. The scene ends on a hopeful note, underscoring Malema's faith in the transformative power of unity and solidarity, reminding us that we are not just the future of Africa, we are its present, and it's time we start acting like it. In the din, in the heart of Julius Malema's vision lies a new Africa. The narrator begins, an Africa that is not only free and united, but also innovative, creative and resilient. We delve into Malema's belief in the untapped potential of Africa. His faith in its people's capacity for innovation and creativity and his conviction in their resilience. Africa has always been a cradle of innovation. Malema's voice comes through. It's time we reclaim that legacy. The scene shifts to highlight the strides made by African nations in areas of technology, arts and culture, reflecting Malema's emphasis on education and the nurturing of young talents. We must invest in our greatest resource, our people, he insists. But he also recognizes the need for resilience in the face of adversity. The road to our envisioned future will not be smooth, but through unity we can weather any storm, he says, reaffirming his call for solidarity. The scene concludes with a powerful image of Africa, vibrant and dynamic, a continent on the rise. The narrator's voice comes in one last time, echoing Malema's message. In this new Africa, we are not just survivors. We are innovators, creators, and trailblazers. We are the architects of our destiny. 